It is seven past eight. Uh, time to catch up with Di Hinwood, uh, one of the country's most successful comedians, of course. Seven Days Family Feud, Dancing with the Stars, this year's season of Taskmaster. Also this year went public with his battle, of course, with bowel cancer. And as part of that, he's hosting this live uh, to air comedy show tonight to raise funds for the Cancer Society. And Di Hinwood is with us. Very good morning to you. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, Mike. Now, listen, uh, first question we do this with guests has become a thing. A huge prize is available for you this morning. If you can name the last time you were on this program. The la- I, I've never been on this program. It's interesting you should say that. I now, don't... now here's, the, here's the dilemma. I didn't think you'd been on this program either. And I thought it would be nice to meet Di Henwood. So you come in here this morning. The first thing is, it's nice to see you again. And I go, oh, God, here it is. This is embarrassing. I say, have I met you before? And you go, yeah, we're at the old Jeremy Clarkson thing. And, and you're right, we were. Yeah. Uh, and the claim here this morning is you've been on this program in 2013. That is outrageous. Now I don't, I don't. Do you I want to deny it? I don't want to uh, boast, but I've done quite a few <laughs> breakfast radio appearances. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and even if you were, you can't remember any of it. <laughs> anyway, well, it's good. It's good to have you back. Is the show sorted for tonight? Yes, it is. We've got an amazing lineup. Well, when I say yes, it is. It's stand-up comedy, which is a fluid beast at the best of times, and we're going live to air with this. So people are going to be sitting in Q Theatre, and the people at home who watching will be watching stand up go out live normally yeah. it gets edited down and packaged up and um sort of breaths get cut out and it's done for duration whereas this is how people would actually see it in a stand-up comedy club so it's basically you're gonna see we've got amazing comics josh thompson ben hurley justine smith mel bracewell chris parker they know what they're doing so mm. they're in safe hands i'm gonna be doing a few jokes i'm gonna be pushing people to donate to the cancer society ANZ's putting it all on, so yeah, it's, I think we're we're ready. Fantastic. Are you enjoying this role, or what's the word you would use for this new role you found, given your circumstances? I am enjoying it quite a bit because I was uh, kept my diagnosis private for three years, and I'm still doing stand up comedy. And stand up's usually something you talk about things in your life. Yeah. So I felt I was being really unauthentic trying to be because I was always sort of the bubbly. It's all good. I'm just a Kiwi trying to have a good time sort of guy, mm. and then. Once I was public, not that I talk about cancer a lot, but people know what's going on with me. I have a few gags more around um, the, the the actual mechanics of MRIs and all that sort of carry on. So I'm really embracing it. It, um, it also is so nice to be able to connect and help help a few people as I mean look I mean cancer's everywhere in New Zealand Isn't it just? and the Cancer Society are, are, they help me they help people outside of Auckland who have got to come in and have accommodation they pay for their accommodation they keep them close to the hospital and that so seeing people do good work and be involved uh, it sort of helps me good in a way I'm good do, do, do you have that thing where people treat you differently or not um, a little bit, but not too much. The ups, the upside is even when I've gone through treatment, I've sort of still looked the same, which yeah. has been a blessing. I hadn't lost my hair and you so look, forth. You, you look, and I look. Ironically, I'm probably uh, outside of the cancer the healthiest I've been in my life because really? uh, you know you focus on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, right, I've got to get off the booze. I've got to do yeah, this. Got, yeah, so I'm yeah. focusing on my health. And, and now um, people don't treat me too differently sometimes people get the wrong end of the stick a guy came up to me in a cafe the other day and went i'm sorry to hear about your aids mate and i was like um, i don't know if you i don't think you watched my interview very closely so he had the best of intentions but he sort of came at it from the wrong dear end. idea you were going to you you would have to have done or said something at some point wouldn't you because at some point something would have happened that you'd have to go by the way I don't know, I can't turn up anymore, or I'm a bit sicker than I thought, or whatever. Yeah, well, it was, though, that sort of thing. Last year I got to a point where um, they we always had an intent to cure, and then in August last year they sort of said, well, we're mo- it's incurable now, so it's about just trying to keep the tumour load low, just keep... I liken it to keeping a classic car on the road. I've yeah. just got to do some spot welding here and there <laughs> until we can find a find an, a way out of this. So it was, yeah, it was like, wow, this is actually something I'm living with now. Yeah. And I wanted to, I decided I'm living with cancer. I'm not packing up and hiding away. Yeah. I'm live, I'm going to be happy. 
I love doing comedy, love making TV, so I just want to keep out there and keep doing it. And when it aligns with actually being able to help other people sure. who are going through it, it sort of is the, the perfect storm. Are you the way, or has your reaction been the way that you thought you would should you ever get into health trouble? Did you ever think you'd get into some sort of health trouble, like, you know? No, so it's never been in my family, and I've always been pretty healthy. And so you're one of those people who doesn't think about that stuff. No, I'm pretty resilient. And so I'd never had an event where I'd been laid up for a while right. and had to go through that, what if this is, yeah. is my lot? So I had no idea how I'd face it. And luckily I, I faced it. I've always been pretty good in like work-wise and stuff. If there is a crisis, I'm pretty good in it. Yeah. And luckily it galvanised my family. My wife and I have never been closer. Wow. Um, it's really sort of crystallised spending time with kids and all that sort of carry on. So, no, I've been um, I've been super proud of how so you I've should be. faced yeah. it. Yeah. See, I worry about stuff like that a lot. I, I think I'm, I think you're unusual. I, my guess is you're unusual that you haven't I've, thought uh, about it. Most of my friends are hypochondriac. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. Yeah. You go or, think, what would happen if I did this or something goes wrong? You know, you start. It's, it's certainly with a certain age you get to, and you suddenly think, well, you know, I've been lucky so far. What if I'm not? What would I do? How would I react? Blah blah blah. And part of it must be also that you seem to be going well health wise it's not like you're laid up a lot or have I got that wrong no it's the thing of I'm laid up I do chemo for three months then I basically have about four or five months off during that three months I'm laid up every second week right. but for me part of my process is I'm a bit of a doer so once I go through a few days of feeling like rubbish then I start coming out the other side. If I get out and start working and start doing some things and being helpful around the house and that, that actually sort of gets me out of the funk. Because, you know, when you're... I suppose it's that th idle hands thing. When of course. I'm, when I'm busy... Mm. I'm not thinking about it, no, exactly. and, and I'm just sort of in finding zen, if you will, sure. when you're just out there doing things. What I'm hoping here is that when we get you back on again, you'll remember this interview now, and so you won't forget that you're... Well, were, hopefully, uh, well, uh, hopefully uh, it uh, is in 2033, well, and, uh, like we did last week. We should have a 10-year catch-up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, let, let's do it. More, more in a moment with Di Henwood. Di Henwood, 14 past eight. Di Henwood is our guest, and we found the moment, Di, 10 years ago. Oh, I, I, someone's been trawling through okay, the archives. We've we, we got archives like you wouldn't believe. It, this is this is what we sounded like 10 years ago. Di Henwood is with us. Good morning to you. Good morning. I must say, I was just listening to um, Pete Montgomery. That, there's no, make, nothing makes you feel more like a New Zealander than Pete Montgomery um, uh, commentating the race. Okay? There is nothing like Pete Montgomery at all. This DVD of yours uh, is online as well. This is the way of the future, isn't it? I mean, do you get pirated? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, here's the thing. The first time I did was yesterday. So that, that, that hasn't dated at all, this, this DVD. And, and, and then, Di, you went on to talk about Louis C.K., so, you know. Oh, jeez, this DVD well, well, thing. Well, both Louis C.K. and DVDs have how been cancelled. How old men do we sound at the moment? I, I love it. Pete Montgomery, <laughs> DVDs. <laughs> you Damn. know, so, uh, ironically, I still basically have 90% of those DVDs in a... Um, in a box at home because I released them just at the cusp of DVDs <laughs> <laughs> falling off the radar. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, we were saying off here, funnily enough, um, how, how, how much I've admired TV3 over the years in terms of what they did, uh, particularly towards comedy or for comedy, uh, and how many of you guys got a, a great break out of them taking a risk and, you know, and, and, and giving it a whirl and, and look at you guys now. Yeah, uh, the sort of journey of, I mean, me being slightly older than a few of the younger ones who came through there, when, when I came through, it was I was doing gigs at the Levin Cosmopolitan Club, which is not as cosmopolitan <laughs> as you'd think. Uh, and, um, and people were like, what are you doing here? Bloody Barry's. He's yeah. a funny guy. He's, yeah. he's cracking us up every <laughs> night. We don't need you, you know. We've had John Clark. We've had Billy T. We yeah. don't need more comics. Yeah. And there was like Mike King was still, um, he was he was sort of doing uh, great stuff, you and Gilmore. But yeah, then there was this hiatus in New Zealand comedy. Seven Days came through. And it was that thing of TV sort of legitimised people. Like they'll go, oh, they, they, he, that guy cracked me up. Then yeah. when they see them live, 
it buys you a few minutes. 100%. The thing with comedy is, it's very honest. It only buys you a small amount of time. Yeah, you got to be good because you can't. Yeah. You can go to an art gallery and you can sort of studiously nod, but you can't fake laugh. So you know immediately whether you're going well or not. Exactly. Hey, before you go, we've got to talk about the Warriors because you Absolutely. are you are a big. See, I've followed the Warriors hand on heart. I follow the Warriors. Every single game since they started back in the 90s. So oh, I've been there God. the whole time. Have you been there the whole time? Yes, I had. So my thing is, I, I was a Wellingtonian. Yep. Right. So, well, I, see, so was I. So I, oh, yes. Yeah. So I followed them from afar on the TV. Mm. And then it was two, early 2000s I moved up to Auckland and then could actually start going exactly. to the games. And it was just so amazing. And, I mean, what I love about us Warriors fans is that we are still here. Sure. And if you look at our, we've had very sporadic success. That so the true. fact that we're still here means there is something about the club. It is, eh? It's and um, it's actually I quite like the, the old out-of-touch person who comes up and tries to give me a mock about being a Warriors <laughs> fan this year. And I'm actually we're third on the table. Mate. Well, exactly. exactly. And, and, and I, I believe this is our year. I, I don't know that we'll win it. But uh, we're in the playoffs. I think we'll be in the top four. We'll get a home playoff. We might go to the final. And I think of, of the other years when we've been in the final, where we've clearly been not prepared for it, uh, we're prepared for it this year. Absolutely. And I think even if we don't win that final, it is our year because I think we've bedded in a good yeah. base yeah. for the next yeah. few years. Hopefully. I mean... There's just sign Andrew Webster, whatever he's doing. Hundred <laughs> percent. Keep, keep, keep him in charge. Him some more. It's a dynasty. Is what it's, it is. I, I it's, love it's that. A, it's a dynasty. All right. So 2013, 2023. Uh, we'll try and make it before 2033 because this has been a lot of fun. Good luck tonight. Uh, um, it'll go well, obviously, but uh, I hope it's fantastic. Yes. For you. Tune in on three at uh, eight thirty for the ANZ Comedy Treatment. Fantastic. Good to see you, mate. Thanks. Go. Mate.